This video is about calculating double integrals by thinking of them as repeated or iterated single integrals. First integrating in one direction, say the x direction, and then in the y direction. To see how and why this works, we'll need to think in terms of volume. Suppose we want to calculate the double integral of f of x, y, dA over a rectangle r. If this top surface is our graph of z equals f of x, y, then we think about this double integral as representing the volume under this surface and above the rectangle, where the rectangle goes in the x direction from a to b and in the y direction from c to d. To compute this volume, we can think of slicing the volume using planes that are parallel to the yz plane, and then adding up or integrating the areas of these cross-sectional slices. I have a cross-sectional slice for each x value between a and b, so I can think of the total volume of the solid as the integral from a to b of a of x dx, where a of x is the area of the cross-sectional slice at the x value of x. But a of x itself can be thought of as an integral. We can write a of x as the integral from the y value of c to the y value of d of f of x, y, dy. Here we're holding x constants, that's just telling us which slice we're talking about, and we're integrating with respect to y. If we put these two pieces together, we have that the volume, represented by the double integral, is going to be the integral from x equals a to x equals b of the integral from y equals c to y equals d of f of x, y, dy, dx. This inner integral represents our a of x, and the outer integral, which is the volume, we get by integrating our resulting area expressions. We can do an analogous process by slicing in the other direction with planes that are parallel to the xz plane. Now our volume is going to be the integral as y ranges from c to d of our cross-sectional area, which is now a function of y. But as before, the cross-sectional area at position y can itself be thought as an integral now going in the x direction from x equals a to x equals b of our function dx. So putting this together, our double integral is our integral with respect to y of our integral with respect to x. This result is known as Fubini's theorem, which says that if f is continuous on this rectangle, then the double integral, defined in terms of the Riemann sum, is equal to the iterated integrals. In other words, this double integral can be written as the integral with respect to x of the integral with respect to y of our function, or it can be written as the integral with respect to y of our integral with respect to x of our function. In fact, this theorem still holds even if f is not continuous on the whole rectangle. As long as f is bounded on the rectangle, f is discontinuous only on a finite number of smooth curves, and the iterated integrals exist. Notice that Fubini's theorem actually gives us two different ways to compute a double integral. We could either integrate with respect to y first, or integrate with respect to x first. Which way we choose will usually depend on which way makes the integrals easier to compute. Let's use Fubini's theorem to calculate an exact answer for this integral that we only approximated with a Riemann sum in a previous video. We can rewrite the integral either by integrating with respect to x first or by integrating with respect to y first. In the first situation, the bounds of integration here are going to be x values. So those bounds will be from x equals 0 to x equals 2, 
while the bounds on the outer integral will be y values, so that'll be from y equals 0 to y equals 1 to agree with our rectangle's bounds. If we do the integrals instead in the other direction, now our inner integral will be y values, and the bounds for our outer integral sign will be x values. Now let's start to integrate. If we use the setup shown here on the left, then we start by integrating this inner integral. Since an integral respect to x, we're thinking of y as a constant. We could integrate this using integration by parts, but I think it's going to be easier to use this setup shown here on the right, because now when we integrate this inner integral respect to y, x is a constant, that's simpler to integrate. First I'll just copy down the outside integral sign. We're not going to even mess with that for a while. And then as far as the inside integral, I can just carry down the x, which is a constant as far as this integral's point of view. And the integral of e to a power is basically going to be e to that same power. Uh, but I think I'm going to need to divide by negative x in order to make things work out right. So let's see. I'll rewrite that. Well, this is evaluated from y equals 0 to 1. I'll just rewrite this one more time. And I can check that I did the integration right by just taking the derivative of this and making sure I do, in fact, derivative with respect to y and making sure I do, in fact, get this the result. And it does work out because of the chain rule. So now I'll copy down my outer integral sign again. I'm going to evaluate at the bounds of integration. So that gives me minus e to the minus x minus minus e to the minus x times 0. I'm just plugging in y equals 1 and y equals 0. That simplifies to minus e to the minus x plus 1. Now I just need to integrate a simple function of one variable, and so that gives me e to the minus x plus x evaluated between x equals 0 and x equals 2. So I can plug in 2 for x and 0 for x, and I get a final answer of e to the minus 2 plus 1. As a decimal, that's about 1.14, which is very close to the Riemann sum approximation we got using a midpoint rule in a previous video. In this video, we learn to compute double integrals as iterated integrals, and that you could integrate in different orders.